All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another session of 30 Minutes with. This is Downtown Spokane's recurring webinar series in which we bring to you local industry experts and community leaders to talk about some of the more pressing topics of the day and provide some useful information to you. Uh, my name is Kevin Campbell. I'm the Business Relations Coordinator for the Downtown Spokane Partnership and Business Improvement District. And today I have the pleasure of introducing our featured presenter, Micah Maloney. Micah is the Program Manager for Spokane Arts. And today she's going to be talking with us about how businesses can benefit from integrating art and local artists into so many different uh, aspects of whatever it is your business may do. So in a moment, I'll pass things over to Micah. Uh, if you have any questions during her presentation, please feel free to just put them into the chat box and we will uh, get to them after she has kind of finished with the prepared portion of things and leave the remaining time for Q&A. Um, and you can also use that as maybe a chance to unmute yourself too if you'd like to ask that way uh, towards the end. Um, I'll also note that we do record these sessions, and so we post them online to Downtown Spokane's YouTube channel afterwards, so you'll be able to reference the content and share it with anyone else uh, after this session is done as well. So without any further ado, I'll go ahead and pass things over to you, Micah. Micah, thanks for being here with us. We appreciate you taking the time and uh, look forward to hearing what you have to say. So if you're ready, go ahead and take it away. All right, great. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to... Uh, share more a little bit about what Spokane Arts does and uh, ways that I see the arts and, and artists to be a good resources for um, local businesses and building owners uh, downtown. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen here and move through a little bit of a presentation just to give you a little background um, on Spokane Arts. Uh, we are an independent 501c3 nonprofit arts organization who builds and supports arts and culture in Spokane. And we do that through these uh, four main uh, pillars here, advocacy, professional development for artists and creatives, uh, grant making, primarily our Saga program, but also in the last year we did quite a bit more um, artist relief and emergency grant funding. And then uh, programming, a wide range of programming, including uh, public art and uh, murals and uh, a huge amount of programs. Uh, we are, um, we were founded, uh, it sort of sprung up uh, as a, to fill the gap left by the city art department being cut and uh, fill the growing needs of our local creative community uh, in a range of ways. And our funding organizations, founding organizations are the, the city of Spokane, public facilities, business Spokane and downtown Spokane partnership. Well, like I mentioned, uh, we do quite a bit of advocacy, both on the local and state levels. Uh, and this last year, this uh, expanded quite a bit as we were advocating to make sure that um, uh, relief funding and uh, unemployment and a variety of other like resources that were being looked at and adjusted and opened up uh, adequately adjust them. Uh, address the needs of the creative community. Uh, the creative community was uh, hit quite hard <laughs> in the last year, uh, as you can easily imagine. Um, most, so many of our uh, creatives in the area uh, are some sort of freelance worker who were quite vulnerable uh, as things began to shut down. Uh, and then a lot of, of work is based on being able to connect uh, with the public, whether that's performances, teaching workshops or classes, or selling work at events and festivals, uh, and as well, all of those things were were paused. Uh, people's incomes were paused. Um, another aspect of what we do is public art. So we help uh, administer and facilitate uh, sculpture projects. Uh, as far as like, uh, this is the new plaza by the library in City Hall. Uh, we also do murals, um, signal boxes. These are just some of the more like visible public art projects uh, that you can see. And again, these are often um, partnerships through a variety of, of uh, community partners. So the court mural you can see there that we've teamed up with Hooptown and we're installing some more of those this year, as well as um, we've got a, a, the mural on the left there is the alleyway mural. And that was a, a partnership between the the building owner in that area, the city council, um, DSP, and Spokane Arts. And then last year, also another thing we did uh, help a bit more and work with DSP on matching up local businesses with artists for temporary murals as some uh, storefronts as they were closed, uh, wanted to have 
uh, plywood on their on their windows, but not have it look just like plywood on their windows. So it was an opportunity to pay artists that were out of work uh, and fill the space uh, with a bit of artwork. Um, I just want to talk a little bit in general about the creative economy. Obviously, things have changed uh, in the last couple of years, and we're sort of uh, we'll wait to see how things happen um, and adjust in the next couple of years. But uh, 2018 is going to give us a good sense of where we were at, and things have definitely been on a, a period of growth for the creative uh, economy and the creative communities. 11% uh, of the overall workforce in 2018 was creative wage-based jobs, and that does not include freelance and self-employed creatives. And uh, that is one thing that really struck me even. I felt like I had a good sense of the balance of, of artists and creatives in the community. And uh, as we started doing the relief grants last year uh, and looking at, you know, we're looking at people reporting their, their lost income and, and, and what they would usually get from different events. And I was kind of blown away by the, the number of, of creatives and artists and freelance workers and how steadily they had built their incomes over 10, 20 years uh, in the community. Uh, and all of that was gone really quickly. So I think that that number not including freelance and self-employed creatives is a, is a significant um, chunk of the economy that's not being represented there. Um, and, you know, creative occupations uh, includes a range of things, photographers, musicians, graphic designers, software developers, writers, authors, those are the top five, but we're also talking, of course, about um, visual artists, uh, filmmakers, AV techs, uh, a whole range of, of types of work. Um, and I did actually, let me I want to yeah, talk about Saga a little bit here and how that relates to the creative economy. Saga is our grant program and it is funded by a small percentage of the admissions tax. Uh, and we've seen a really strong and direct connection to the increase in admissions tax collected uh, as the Saga, Saga is funding events, uh, which then bolster, uh, bolster events people can go to and are paying admissions tax for. So it's a really nice um, sort of self-feeding growth thing there. Obviously, uh, again, everything was really sort of hit uh, in a huge way last year, uh, and I think we're going to be able to see a lot of that um, balance out in the coming year because we're already seeing just a huge hunger uh, for people to return to events. And so I think uh, there's obviously a, a, a serious need that needs to be met in what was lost last year, but I'm uh, personally really excited by what we're seeing already, and I think that um, especially in the downtown core, but all, all throughout Spokane, we're seeing people, uh, as soon as events are opening up safely, people are there, they're excited, they're thrilled to be there. I don't know if anybody was at the uh, park when the North Bank uh, opening weekend, but it was just a flood of people. And I think part of that is, of course, that the park is, is great and everything they put in there is awesome, but part of it also is, I think, just this pent up excitement to get back to things. Um, so yeah, Saga funds individual artists and arts organizations as well as uh, arts organization, um, like artist collectives. And this is a huge range of programs that encourage you if you're not familiar with Saga to uh, check out the past grantees on our website, uh, partly just as a way to get to know some more people and what they're up to in the community because uh, there's a huge number of, of cultural organizations that you might not be familiar with, individual artists doing really great work, um, artist collectives that have really grown uh, a strong foundation uh, in the creative community here. So that I think is a, is a great kind of pool to look at and we will continue to grow. We fund that in three different rounds through the year. So right now we're um, just past the deadline and about to start reviewing the uh, round two grantees. Um, the artist roster is an, as a resource that's on our website that I would encourage everyone to um, explore and uh, I might uh, share my screen in a bit uh, and talk about that a little bit more, but this is a free artist directory. Uh, it's a growing resource for creatives and for people looking to hire, hire artists. And so this is something we started when we redid our website about um, two years ago and it is uh, got, I think, 
oh, a couple hundred artists on it already in a, a, the whole range of creative disciplines. Um, and it is continually growing with new artists and creatives on there. So it's, an, it's a way basically for artists to have uh, a mini page that has direct uh, contact information with links to their website and emails. So you can look through and find someone whose work uh, might fit the project you're wanting to hire for uh, or partner with and, and get directly in, in touch with them. Uh, and the caveat on that also is I'm always available. You can uh, just email me if you don't have time to search through the roster and are looking through looking for someone specifically, um, I can help find them for you. One of the um, other projects we did last year uh, was the Arts Mean Business um, music video series. And I just wanted to mention this. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about other opportunities I see for ways artists can work with local businesses and building owners uh, in a big range of project. But this to me was, I think, a really uh, a good example of an original idea on how to connect uh, three different creative groups in a way that supported um, all three of them. And so we had um, this music video series that we funded that matched local filmmakers and local musicians with local businesses that they cared about. So the, uh, the musicians created an original song, uh, the filmmakers were able to have work uh, filming that and creating a music video for them, and they, the song was focused and the video was focused on highlighting and supporting and marketing um, a single business that, that meant something to that, that team of people. And so those turned into something that both the musician now has a really high quality music video that they can share and have on their website and, and share on social. The businesses got a little boost from that uh, free marketing uh, and, a, and something they can continue to use uh, over, over time. And then the filmmakers of course got the work uh, to do to do what they do and in and, and some examples to gain experience doing a different type of, of filmmaking and focusing on a music video. So I thought that was a really great project. Um, I'm going to actually stop share and I just want to share a little more about the artist roster. Um, and then we'll talk a little more about different ways I see uh, a huge variety of stuff for artists. And then I'd love to do questions and, and of, of what people might be wondering about hiring artists and ways that can work for them. So again, this is the artist roster um, and it is uh, just on our website. Uh, you can get to it from the homepage to see the artist roster. Um, it's searchable, uh, you can filter it by a variety of filters and you can search by art type. Um, so you can uh, highlight fashion and see people that are working in fashion locally, film, et cetera. Um, and then you can also like visual obviously is a very broad category. That's, that's, gonna, that's gonna give you a lot of results. So you could just scroll through the roster uh, and, and see what everyone is up to. Or you can also use the site-wide search um, and let's say you want to find an illustrator. That's going to give you, this is site-wide, so it's going to give you some things that aren't uh, on the artist roster, but you'll see the see artist page next to um, artist roster people that have illustrator in their profile. So I'm just gonna go to Jamei Lin is the artist that did the alleyway mural that we looked at a second ago. And just so you can kind of see how this works, they've got a small sample of their work that you can scroll through. Uh, this I think actually is the mock-up for the mural that she did outside of Feast World Kitchen. And then they've got um, email, website links. So then you can click and learn more about uh, what the artist is up to. Jamei is a, um, a muralist and fine artist, but she's really uh, growing her uh, illustration and children's book art, especially um, side of what she does. So that's just kind of a glimpse of how that works. Um, and then, yeah, I'm gonna stop my share. And then I just wanted to talk through a few different ways that I kind of see um, opportunities for artists and businesses um, partnerships that maybe don't get brought up um, or thought of always. And I think uh, murals are a, a fun growing one. I think we're seeing more and more murals around, around town and I think we'll continue to see that 
um, interior and exterior. And I think those that's a way both to like um, draw, like increase the, you know, like the, the how great your space looks at your business. Um, but also they can be a draw of like, oh, I know so-and-so did a mural down here. I'm gonna go check it out. Or, oh, let's go look at the mural out there. And I mean, also the like, uh, selfie walls and interactive murals outside of spaces uh, really bring people as well. Um, so those are a good obvious one. There's also, I think we have a huge number of great illustrators and graphic designers. So sometimes we just think of that as uh, your logo design, which is important to, to think about, um, but that can extend through a whole range of marketing, a, a new marketing campaign, um, but also surface treatments in, inside your space or outside um, window displays. Um, I think there's a number of artists that are doing more like pattern making that can be translated into wallpaper um, and fabric and all sorts of things. So this is a way to, that you can use to brand uh, brand your business um, or a new space or a new aspect of what you're doing in a way that's going to be really original and unique because you're working directly with, a, with an artist that's going to learn about your business. Um, Visual artwork, uh, obviously we have the First Friday Art Walk and a lot of people do uh, rotating gallery exhibits for that. Um, and I think that is a way, like we see great foot traffic, we see big increases in the neighboring businesses, um, restaurants and other shops that are seeing an increase when people are coming to those. And, and just in my um, just casual conversations with folks in the last couple of months, I think we're seeing right now a, a good increase in purchasing. And again, I think that's, there's some sort of pent up uh, desire to be interacting and, and going out and, and doing things. So I think that is something that we'll continue to see the rest of the year. Um, but another thing to consider is balancing that. Maybe if you don't have a space or the resources or the type of business that lends itself to a first Friday art walk or a rotating gallery exhibit, um, or you just don't have the, the, the time and capacity to manage that. Um, another investment to think about is, is investing in a piece of artwork that, uh, that you love and that fits your space really well uh, and that is, is gonna be a good connection still to an artist, build a relationship with an artist, be something that people might wanna come in and visit and see. So that can be worthwhile also. And that's, that's something that you can connect through. Um, uh, like the artist roster, the Mac has resources, we've got other resources to kind of help connect you as well as connecting with, with galleries you might go to see and find some work. Um, and then events large and small, like I've said a few times already, uh, I think we'll see a huge, a huge increase in like the desire to go to things uh, in the next couple of years. And, and also I think an appreciation and what that means. And I think that this is an opportunity for um, businesses and musicians to sort of, uh, no, sorry, businesses and, and whoever they're working with, whether that's musicians or, or artists doing a reading or a, a demo or a workshop or interactive thing. Uh, I am hopeful <laughs> that one of the things that we're taking away from the last year or so is how important these interactions are to us and and by important I mean valuable and worth investing in and so I know that it, it I miss going to concerts and I am perhaps more willing to pay um, a fair fee to go to a concert even at a small venue or something so that's that's just an example of, of, of something and I think that hopefully will play out in businesses understanding that you're investing in hiring an artist to do something, they're gonna bring in a community of people as well as add to the atmosphere of what you're doing. Um, one thing I sort of mentioned, but wanted to just expand on a little bit is, um, I think we think also of like having a musician in your restaurant or in your store or space, um, but also doing um, readings, book clubs, workshops, I think interactive things where people are, are learning a new thing. So, I mean, think the like Pino's palette type um, type of thing. Those are, um, those are growing. Uh, and even as we haven't been able to do a lot of things, the, the numbers of people partake, partaking in like workshops online um, and creative classes like that has really grown in the last year. And so I think those will translate again to in-person. So those might be ways that you can think of um, activating your space during off hours, whether it's just a slow time at your at your retail, um, or or your you have an office building and it's it's closed in the evenings, but there's an open meeting space that you might want to be able to use and and do something with. Um, 
Yeah, and then the last thing I wanted to mention that ties into that uh, is just window displays and merchandising. And I think we have um, DSP in the last couple of Christmases has uh, redone the, um, the Crescent window displays. Uh, at the Grand and those have been um, a huge hit and people have loved to see those and, and come from, you know, outside of the city, come specifically for that and maybe they're gonna combine that with going out and doing something else. And I think that, uh, I think that is just a sign that like, that when, that's a window display. <laughs> and so I think we don't often think of the ways that merchandising and what we're doing in the window spaces um, can really be activated and draw people to your space. Um, okay, I think I talked as usual way longer than I expected, so I'm going to shut up and we can do a Q&A if there's any questions or thoughts on specific ways to connect with artists, other ways um, that spoken arts can be a resource. Um, yeah, what, what, what can I help answer other than just... Well, first off, thanks, Micah. We appreciate it. I, uh, certainly not rambling. I think that's a okay. lot of... <laughs> sort of stuff we wanted to hear and that's great. Um, so yeah, and if anyone does have any questions, feel free to chime in now with those. Um, just uh, something I'd like maybe for you to touch on, Micah, is um, can you just kind of talk about sort of the benefit and the significance of hiring these local artists um, and also just kind of the, the depth of talent, I think, to maybe um, kind of iterate to people because I think, you know, someone might say, oh, you know, I need to do some rebranding and might think they have to kind of go the agency route or something a little bit more um, you know, formal like that. Whereas uh, I think it's, it's you know, I, I've come from an agency background and I've seen that there are a lot of great, you know, freelance graphic designers who are really savvy and really accessible. And so um, yeah. can, can oftentimes kind of be the best option to go with. Totally. And I think that accessibility is a big point of that is um, if you are working with a freelance designer or illustrator, Obviously, they're going to have other projects and things that they're working on um, or other work or something, but you're likely to get um, a lot of their focus and attention when they're working on your project. You're the, you're the only thing they're thinking about and they're really um, excited and focused on what you're doing so they can dive into um, and think about um, your needs and your business and they already have that sort of built in understanding of the community. Um, and might bring in a little different perspective of Spokane than you have, but they're, but it's coming from um, a local lens instead of um, outside of Spokane. Um, so I think that is, is something to consider. And I think there is really um, the, the, the depth of talent that we have in Spokane uh, continually blows me away. And I think one of the things actually that I've enjoyed uh, with, uh, I'm the one that helps kind of put the artist rosters, you know, interside on the back end of the website. Um, and I'm coming across artists that I know um, work in one thing. And then it, in doing that, even the small glimpse of what they're doing, I'm learning they work in this whole other field as well. And that's something that I think is, is really interesting is, is if you're working with, if you're hiring a firm to do a specific type of, of, of project, they're going to stay focused on that work. If you're hiring um, an artist, um, freelance graphic designer or illustrator, even if you're starting with the, we need to rebrand and, and do this new logo or our website um, looks horrible or hasn't been updated and that's the way people are interacting with our business right now. Um, or people are coming back into the space and we need new menus. Um, that might be the project you start with, but you're working with them and they're going to just uh, be both more likely to have a whole range of other talents that they might be able to connect to um, or have another connection to the rest of the community that might be really um, useful and, and, and come up with a new partnership or idea to activate your space um, in a whole different way. Yeah, that's great. So um, if I can also just kind of tag on to that. So for people who might know that they want to do something but they may not know what. So what kind of uh, resources does Spokane Arts offer or where would you kind of direct people to maybe go for even just some consultations or, or just to get some ideas or see what kind of you know, things are available to them? Mm -hmm. um, I think a big thing that a lot of people uh, don't always lead with but generally know is their budget. And I think that is kind of the most useful thing. If you're thinking about doing, like it's fine, uh, email me, directly, if anytime you have a question of like, oh, I want to do a mural on the wall, I have no idea how much it would cost. I can't even conceive of if it's possible or not. But probably what you do know is I have X amount of money. If 
if the mural costs this much or if the menu design costs this much, I can do it. And if it's more than that, I can't. Um, so you likely know what your budget range is. Um, so starting with that and being upfront with that uh, is important, whether you're, you're sharing that information with me um, or reaching out directly to an artist on the artist roster. The artists, like I said, they've got their websites and social um, and emails on their artist roster listing. So you can directly reach out to someone and say, hey, I see you do murals or I love your illustration work. I've got this project. Here's my, here's my timeline, here's my budget, here's what I'm hoping for, can we have a conversation? And if you don't have all that information or, or you wanna kind of give ranges of things, that's totally fine, but, but you're gonna save everybody time and the artist is gonna be more excited to respond more promptly if it's really clear um, what you're offering. Um, and I think, um, oh my God, I had a really important thing to say about that also. <laughs> it's just, um, shoot, it's that like pandemic brain. Um, yeah, it's all been important so far. So. Yeah, <laughs> great. This was like the one really good thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, I think knowing your, your, as much as you, as you can know your budget and your expectations for work, that's great. Um, and what you're available for. And maybe what you'll find out is uh, they can do a ton of that. And what, and what I've found in working with artists is that they're not, um, they're not gonna say, oh, I would have charged 2000 for that mural and you're gonna pay me 5,000. Uh, I'm gonna take 5,000. I think people are very clear about, um, this is what I can do. And, and this is, this is the scope of that. And, and so maybe we can do that and this other wall, or we could do that and it can be a lot more detailed, or I can do that and get it done faster. Um, because of that, that budget constraint. So I think having that is really helpful. Um, yeah, and that is something also that like, like I said, again, like I'm happy to be a resource for on helping figure out budgets for stuff if you're stuck on that um, and helping connect with, with artists and things. Perfect, well, we are just about at time. So I think we'll start to wrap things up here, but thank you again, Michael, we appreciate it. And uh, we're so appreciative of everything you and the team at Spokane Arts does. Um, you know, we here at downtown Spokane, you know, those are our kind of three main tenants is making a clean, safe and viable downtown. And I really believe that uh, the work you guys do helps play into every one of those tenants. So um, we appreciate that. We appreciate the time to talk to you. We are always available here at downtownspokane.org um, for information there and go to Spokane Arts' website for that artist roster and anything else you may need. Um, so uh, we will get this posted online and just keep an eye out on downtownspokehand.org's uh, events page if you're interested in any other future 30 minutes for sessions that are coming up. We usually do about two a month. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always email me, Kevin Campbell at kcampbell at downtownspokehand.org uh, with any questions or if you'd like to be a presenter. So thank you again, everyone. Uh, thank you, Micah, for presenting and hope you all have a great rest of the day. Thanks.